Hey guys, this is Mets on Tip, and this is the third video to my Tip for Dummy series. Today we're going to go over what you see, what you see in the um, in the equipment tab, and this time I'm going to be using my main account. Main account. What I mean by equipment tab is what you see on your ship. So if I click here and then go to equipment, basically what these stuff mean. Okay, so uh, first we want to start off with the damage. What this means here, what this means here, is that I could do a minimum of this damage and a maximum of that damage, and then I have to wait this long until I can hit again. This is like a normal attack, so I could do uh, 72 damage. I could do 95. Doesn't matter how much I'll do. I still have to wait for this three second period until I can attack again. Um, one thing to note out: this is a cooldown timer, not a warm up timer. So the difference between those two are that if it wasn't more warm up timer, I have I'd have to wait three seconds and then attack. But since this is a cooldown, I can attack and then I have to wait three seconds. There is a difference. Uh, and then here it says max health. Uh, this is pr this is pretty self explanatory. It's basically how much hull or HP you have. And then here is and then. The rest, most of the rest of the stats are like paired. So here we have hit chance and evasion. What these two do is that let's start with hit chance actually. What hit chance does is that if you have a higher hit chance, you are more likely to hit the person rather than miss. And if you have a higher evasion, then the person or NPC that is attacking you is more likely to miss if that is a higher number. Now for damage. What this plus 4% damage means is that I have an added damage bonus that's already been that's already been added here. So uh, if I had a weapon that, say for example I had a different weapon, it was still same power and cool, and cooldown timer, but it didn't have this but it didn't have this damage bonus, that would change. So when this when a damage bonus is added, that also changes. It doesn't mean that there is a plus four percent damage on top of the fifty eight, as that's already changed at as a minimum and plus four percent on the maximum. Um, the thing that opposes to that is the damage reduction. So when someone attacks you, what this means is that they will do this much percentage less damage onto you than what they usually would. So if so, since I have this minus two percent damage re reduction, what this basically means is that if someone attacks me, they will do two percent less damage than what they usually would compared to someone who has zero percent damage reduction. Now, um, for critical, now you have critical damage, critical chance, and critical resist. What critical damage? No, let's go critical chance first. Critical chance is how likely you are to do a critical hit. So, uh, how do I explain it? So, the higher this is, the more likely you are to do a critical hit. What a critical hit is basically like a super hit, if you like, to, if you like to call it. So, it does this much percentage more damage on top of that compared to what it usually would. So, in this case, since I have one hundred percent plus one plus one hundred percent critical damage, then if it was a critical hit, then I could then I could do damage anywhere between um, 116 and 232 damage, and then I'd have to wait the three seconds as the cooldown timer doesn't as it doesn't affect the cooldown timer at all. Um, and then the thing that, and then what what you would use to defend yourself against critical hits is something called critical resist. Now, I won't go into the mechanics of how these two things work, or how the rest of the paired stats work, but if you want me to, I can, in another video, just comment underneath this video saying that, oh, can you go over the mechanics, or some something along those lines. But basically what you need to know is that the higher this is, the less likely that someone is to do a critical hit on you. Similar to how someone is less likely to hit you if you have a higher evasion. Now, the next thing is splash. So here you can see I have plus 21.93 splash chance and I have no splash resist. What a splash hit does is that if you hit an NPC or a player and you do a splash hit, it means 
it means that same attack will do damage on another person, but half of it. So, um, in this case, if there were two NPCs on the same sector as I was, and I hit one NPC, uh, 100 damage, um, and then and then it done the splash hit. That splash hit would be 50, as it was as it's half of 100. And if I was lucky enough to do another splash hit, if there was another NPC there, then it would do 25 on that. But it is quite rare to do two splashes at once. So, the higher this is, the more likely you are to do that. And what the added splash resist does is basically decreasing the chance of someone else. Um, no, sorry. Let me re let me reword that. What splash resist does is that how is how less like. Let me think. <laughs> um, oh god. Okay, here it is. So, what splash resist does is that you are the higher this is, the less likely you are to get splash it. It is. It does get quite complicated. So I might pause from time to time. So I'm surprised it didn't stop. Um, so the next thing is grapple chance. And hey, what do you know? Grapple resist. What grappling does is that it allows you to grapple or hook another NPC or player and then drag him into another sector of your choice. But then it will de-grapple them afterwards. So you can't keep grappling them forever unless you just Unless you are lucky enough to keep grappling them each time you hit, but that is actually quite rare. So, um, what what this means is that when you hit when you hit an NPC, well, I've already said that actually, <laughs> so I'm not going to go over, the, over that again. And then the higher this is, the grapple resist, then the less likely you are to be grappled when someone hits you. Okay, so. Uh, Next is stun chance, stun duration, and hey, what do you know? Stun resist. <laughs> so, what's these two are linked together just like critical damage and critical chance are, but these are two different things. What the stun chance is, is that ba basically what it means is that the higher your stun chance is, the more likely you are to stun someone, and how long that stun is. Uh, depends on any added st stun duration and the cooldown of your weapon. So if I did have a chance to stun someone and I stunned them, but I had no added stun duration, I'll just do three seconds. But if I had five seconds added stun duration, then it would do eight instead, due to the new mechanics of the game. And then stun resist is basically making you, uh, making the other player less likely to hit you. No. Making the other player less likely to stun you, so that you can't move or attack. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it affects attacks, but I know it definitely affects movement. Uh, the next thing is the XP gain. So what that means is that if you had uh, if you have added XP gain, then it'll then you'll get more XP than you than you usually would. So, say for example, this was 5%, and I killed an NPC that I would normally get 100 XP from, I would get 105 instead. Uh, one quite popular, like, ability, what, if you'd like to call it, sort of, is called Mind Surge, which you can find on the Black Dollar menu. Basically what it does is that it doubles any XP that you gain. So here it says, double all XP earned from kills. What this plus 20 kills thing means is that uh, it will do that for 20 kills each time you buy this, but I'll go over everything that's in the black dollar menu in another video. And uh, why is this mouse not working? Uh, come on. Alright. So the next thing, oh, move, move speed. I think we've, we've already covered that in the last video. So what this move speed is is that uh, the space, no, space, the time you have to wait between jumping from one sector to another. So if I jump to one sector, I'd have to wait roughly 13 seconds until I can jump to another one. But we already covered that in the last video, so I don't need to go into that in too much depth. <laughs> now, uh, these two things are to do with what's called asteroids. 
So asteroids are these big rocks in space here. Bigish. Uh, come on, you know my mouse is really weird when it's recording. I don't know why. Hold on. And it's doing again. Ugh. Okay, much better. So, uh, what this means is that this means seconds, by the way. So, where it says 90 second harvest speed, uh, that is also like a cooldown, similar to whenever you hit, similar to whenever you hit someone. But instead, it's for harvesting asteroids. So, when you harvest one asteroid, you have to wait this period of times until you can harvest another, or until you can harvest it again if it is big enough to be harvested more than once. So, in my case, if I harvested an asteroid, I'd have to wait 90 seconds until I can harvest another one. And then what this means is that how many resources you'll harvest from it in that one time. So, I click or tap on that, on that asteroid, and then I could gain one of these res one of these resources gas uh organics metals radioactives and dark matter i can gain any one of those and then i have and then i have to wait 90 seconds until i can harvest again you can use what's called harvesters to at to uh make these stats like better so so you don't have to wait as long or um or you can gain more resources but mm, i wouldn't there are other things you could Get rather than harvesters, and then the 45 uh, resource capacity is basically the same as it says right here. If it lets me, so here it also says 45. And as I said in the as I said in the previous video, what that means is that you can carry 45 of each resource and not the total because. If it was the total of all resources, then it would be annoying. So, having this as 45 means I can carry 45 organics and 45 gas and 45, not 45, 45 metals and 45 radioactives and 45 dark matter at the same time. Now, uh, one thing I want to go over really quick before I finish this video, before I end this video, is the different colors of sectors and what they mean as they are actually quite useful to know and I wish this wasn't so laggy okay so the free the free by free sector here where you see the where you see that they are blue that basically means no combat is allowed unless you are battling a HC a like a hardcore account so they basically so they can be attacked anywhere really apart from that no combat is allowed here that includes with NPCs and with un and with other players. What the grey area is is like a safe. It's like a safe zone in a sense. Before you get into the black, so you can attack NPCs, but uh, what's it called? But players will be considered neutral rather than hostile, as they would be in black. Say uh, they would also be neutral in blue sector and on Earth. So how that works is that if once you get into black, then you become PvP flagged. If you come back to grey, then you'll still be PvP flagged, but you have to wait a few seconds until you until you become unflagged. Um, if you are flagged and someone sees you, and then they start attacking, they kind of start attacking you, even if you are in the grey area, as you are still PvP flagged. But once they attack, they will also become PvP flagged, so you can attack them as well. As long as you keep attacking, you'll still be PvP flagged in the grey area. If you stop attacking, then that sort of like timer start starts off until until you don't get flagged anymore, and so you can't be attacked by any players. And for some reason, I disconnected. Ah, eh, come on! The black zone is the black zone is basically uh, all PvP. You can, and there are also more more tougher NPCs to beat. Um, most people hang around in black because you can gain more resources from NPCs, from NPCs. Uh, but, well, the drops aren't that great because there are not that many of them. They're mostly uncommons, but oh well. <laughs> um, and also, PvP is allowed in the black. PvP between enemies, 
obviously you can't attack your own teammates, otherwise that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> and then the red ones are what are called invasions. So, how invasions work is that you go into an invasion and there are a crap load of uh, much harder NPCs than there are in regular black. And then you have to try and like defeat them. Once all the NPCs and their like base whatever you like if you'd like to call it is gone, then then that will not become red anymore, that'll just become no more black as that invasion has disappeared. You can tell what kind of invasion it is. Now what I mean by what kind is what race there is, what kind race of NPCs there are. You can tell uh, as I was saying, you can tell what kind of NPCs would be there but just by looking at them. So this icon means there will be heteroclite NPCs in that invasion. Here means there will be weird NPCs in that invasion. And if I can find another one. No, I can't. And there and if you see any any of them that have skulls, it means they are pirate invasions. Okay. Uh that is the end of my video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel Meds on Tip and like and press that like button on this video and comment underneath if you have anything to say on the video or if you want me to add anything or something like that and I'll see you next time happy tipping